Ironside is a groundbreaking TV series from 1967 that follows the sharp and determined chief of detectives, Robert Ironside, who, after a life-changing incident, continues to solve the most challenging cases from his wheelchair. This show was one of the first to feature a police officer with a disability, proving that physical limitations do not diminish the sharpness of the mind. It's filled with moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. As for personal stories, while I don't have personal experiences, many viewers have found inspiration in Ironside's resilience and determination. Perhaps you remember a scene that left a strong impression on you or a moment that inspired you in your own life. What's your most memorable experience with Ironside? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more surprising facts about this beloved series. Were you the one who discovered your uncle's body? No. His housekeeper did. Are you living there? Raymond Burr demonstrated his exceptional acting skills by creating two distinct and successful television characters. After portraying the iconic lawyer for nine years, he returned to the small screen in 1967 with a new challenge to craft a character that could stand apart from his previous role. The character of Ironside emerged, a gritty former chief of the San Francisco police who, after being paralyzed by an assassination attempt, was forced into retirement. Unlike the polished Perry Mason, Ironside was blunt, often speaking impulsively, and had a passion for fast cars and diligent police work. He led a special task force consisting of Ed Brown, a down-to-earth beat cop, Eve Whitfield, an educated female detective, and Mark Sanger, a young man from a troubled background. Set in San Francisco, Ironside offered a different backdrop than Perry Mason's Los Angeles. While Perry Mason was a mainstay on CBS, Ironside became a solid performer for NBC. Despite its initial success, Ironside's rerun popularity has waned, possibly overshadowed by Mason's legacy. Yet, Ironside stands on its own with many memorable episodes, including one where Ironside, confined to his apartment, is pursued by a killer, reminiscent of the climax in Rear Window, ironically featuring Burr as the antagonist. Ironside's distinct tone was evident from the pilot, especially in his banter with Detective Whitfield, showcasing a wit that Perry Mason would not display. This series deserves recognition for its unique contributions to television and the memorable character that Burr brought to life. You'll allow me to talk to Barbara for a few minutes. Is everything all right, Doctor? The x-rays indicate a lineal skull. A 2013 attempt to revive a classic detective show face backlash for its casting choices and darker narrative, leading to its cancellation after a short run. Notably, the original series had a strong connection to another popular legal drama with guest appearances from several actors from that show. The original run also experienced an abrupt end with some episodes not airing until later in syndication. And the worst of those kids has to know Bet's clean, he's straight, and he's successful. Most important. In the show's early days, the main character and his team navigated the streets in a distinctive 1944 V8 one-ton police van, which was later swapped for a Ford Econoline van. The lead actor, Raymond Burr, faced a personal health challenge with kidney cancer, but chose to continue acting, leading to his roles in his final television movies. Character development was significant, with Mark starting as a bodyguard, then becoming a police officer, and later an attorney, culminating in his appointment as a judge in a later movie. This evolution of roles reflected the dynamic changes in the characters' careers over the series' run. That's $40. Portraying a detective confined to a wheelchair, the lead actor faced unique challenges during production, one of which was eye strain due to the constant upward gaze required by his seated position. The show's authenticity was enhanced by alternating between powered and manual wheelchairs, reflecting the reality of many users. Adding to the show's memorable elements, the theme music composed by Quincy Jones marked one of the first major projects for the composer who would later become a household name. This blend of personal challenges and creative milestones contributed to the show's lasting appeal. All right, baby. During the initial episode, the lead character is seen with a bandaged hand, which was a real injury sustained by the actor, Raymond Burr, during a fall in a scene where his character is shot. 
Adding to the show's layers, Burr's portrayal of a detective confined to a wheelchair contrasts with his earlier role in another production where he played the antagonist to a protagonist with a similar physical limitation. Additionally, actress Dana Winter appeared in two separate episodes, notably taking on the role of the lead character's spouse in a special episode. These elements contributed to the unique character dynamics and storytelling of the series. You say that Miss May was the volatile, jealous, possessive type? <laughs> Portraying a detective confined to a wheelchair, actor Raymond Burr experienced significant physical strain beyond the visible injuries to his eyes due to long hours spent in the wheelchair. Paul Winfield, who first appeared on screen in the final season of Perry Mason, was featured in three episodes of the series. Additionally, the show served as a launching platform for two other series, Sarge and Amy Prentice, with certain episodes functioning as their pilot introductions. What else can I do? Early in his career, Stephen Bochco found himself scripting additional scenes for a new detective show to extend the episode's runtime. His skepticism about the show's longevity led to a tense interaction with Frank Price foreshadowing future professional friction. Meanwhile, the character Ed brought a background of military discipline to his role as a police officer, having served in the Marines. The departure of Barbara Anderson from the cast after a dispute over her contract marked a significant change in the show's dynamic, signaling the end of an era and the beginning of new challenges for the series. I feel bad about it. It's okay. Raymond Burr is widely recognized for his leading roles in two significant television series, where he portrayed the main character in both. The initial episode of the 1967 series was presented as a two-hour television movie, which garnered high ratings upon its broadcast on NBC, reflecting a typical strategy for series launches during that era. Currently, Barbara Anderson is the sole surviving member of the cast, following the passing of Elizabeth Bohr in September 2017. After a successful run as a defense attorney on television, Raymond Burr took on a different kind of role, portraying a detective confined to a wheelchair. This character became a staple on television for eight years, showcasing the actor's ability to lead a series. However, the role came with its challenges, as Burr suffered eye injuries due to the intense lighting required for filming his scenes. The show's influence extended into popular culture, inspiring a parody in the comedy series Get Smart where a character named Leadside mirrored Burr's iconic role. Despite the potential for another long-running series with Kingston Confidential, the show did not continue past its initial episodes due to poor reception. It'll be the last thing you tell anybody. How long have you known Bryson, Mr. Rutledge? Se the set that became the detective's headquarters in the show has a history of its own. Originally built for a major film by Alfred Hitchcock, it served as a backdrop for a dramatic heist. Later, it found a new life as an attraction, allowing visitors to walk through the very space where television drama unfolded. This crossover of sets between cinema and television highlights the resourcefulness of production design and the shared spaces of storytelling in Hollywood. That's a sneaky segue. Dear Francesca, I've never written to a column before. From in the landscape of television history, the show that premiered in 1967 stands out for its groundbreaking portrayal of a police detective confined to a wheelchair. However, behind the scenes, the lead actor, Raymond Burr, faced his own personal challenges. Despite his on-screen persona of strength and determination, Burr was privately battling cancer. His illness was kept secret from the public for many years, adding a layer of poignancy to his character's struggles with disability and crime-fighting. Burr's resilience in the face of his health issues mirrored the perseverance of his character, making his performances all the more powerful and authentic. The actor's dedication to his role and his ability to conceal his pain from viewers until his passing in 1993 is a testament to his professionalism and the enduring spirit of the character he portrayed.